Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about the playback and recording settings tab in the preferences window. So go ahead and press P to bring up the preferences window and select the playback and recording settings tab. First, we have driver mode. We discussed this in the first video, so I won't cover it now, but I'll just say that you'll probably want to use either WDM or ASIO. They should offer the best performance. Next up is dithering. Now, if you convert an audio signal from a higher to lower bit depth, a small amount of harmonic distortion is added, which we don't want to happen. Dithering is a process that reduces that distortion by adding some low-level random noise, or dither, to the audio signal. There are advantages and disadvantages to each option here, and it's really too much to cover in this short video, but basically, the lower on the list, the less CPU intensive the process will be, but also the less desirable the effect it will have on the audio. The higher the settings will take a bit more CPU, but will produce results indistinguishable from the bit depth they were converted from. Triangular is the default. Here we have the checkbox, Share Drivers with Other Programs. If this is not checked, Sonar will not let other programs use the drivers for your interface. So you won't be able to watch, say, this YouTube video if Sonar is open. If you check this box, Sonar will allow other programs to still use the driver even though Sonar is running. Next, we have Use Multiprocessing Engine. This option will only be available if you have a multiprocessor computer. If it's checked, Sonar will use both processors. If unchecked, it will only use one in most circumstances. MMCSS gives Sonar higher priority for resource scheduling. I would just leave that as it is. Next is Play Effect Tails After Stopping. If this box is checked, any effect with a tail will be allowed to finish playing when you stop playback. An example would be a delay effect. The delay may have a duration of one second, so when you press stop, the delayed sound will still play for that one second. If this is not checked, the audio will be cut off as soon as you hit stop. Here we have Always Open All Devices. What this does is open every device, such as stereo outputs, as soon as you hit play or turn on the audio engine. Why would you want to do this? Well, imagine you have two stereo inputs, one set receiving an audio signal, while the other is doing nothing. Only the inputs receiving a signal will be active. Now, what if during playback you decided to switch to the other outputs? The engine would stutter and playback would be delayed while the other device was activated. With this box checked, you can switch seamlessly between devices during playback. Next, we've got Remove DC Offset During Record. Sometimes a DC offset occurs while recording, which is caused by electrical mismatches between the audio hardware and the input device or instrument. You won't be able to hear it, but a DC offset may cause problems in further stages of sound processing. The last checkbox is Disable Input Monitoring During Playback. If this option is checked, input monitoring will be disabled until you begin recording. So any inputs you have will be silenced during playback. I prefer to leave this box unchecked, which is its default. Here we have Command Audition Length in seconds. When you apply an effect or an edit to an audio clip, it will allow you to preview what it will sound like. You can change the preview length here to whatever you like. Here we've got Record Pre-Allocate File, which again is in seconds. What this value does is automatically create an audio file of the specified length when you record, instead of periodically recalculating the size as recording goes on. This can free up your processor and allow you to have more tracks in your project. So let's say you set it to 300 seconds, which would be 5 minutes. When you hit record, Sonar will create a WAV file that is exactly 5 minutes long. If you record for 3 minutes and stop, only then will the processor resize the audio file. If you go over 5 minutes, at that point the processor will begin recalculating it like it would if the value was set to 0. The maximum value here is 14,400 seconds, or 4 hours. The last two options we have are Fade on Start and Fade on Stop. Both are measured in milliseconds. Fade on start will fade in for the specified duration when you hit the play button, while fade on stop will fade out for the specified duration when you press stop. The maximum value for either of these is 100,000, 
or about 16 and a half minutes. So there you go. That covers all of the options in the playback and recording settings tab. Thanks for watching. Please rate and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.